This is KGW News at Sunrise. We know car thefts have been a big problem here in Portland, but this morning we're covering a solution. Police say the city's stolen car trend has actually gone in reverse over the last year. We'll explain why that's happening coming up in our top story. And the Beaverton School District is looking at closing several elementary schools, including Raleigh Park Elementary. Coming up, why some parents say the district has not been transparent with them about the possible closures. Plus. How come they hold their heads like this? I don't know, it doesn't look very comfortable to me. No, I'm getting tired already. <laughs> That is my man Rodney Hill paying a visit to Florence along the Oregon coast. We're going to bring you his full adventure. Sea lions, sand dunes, Whoa. all that good stuff. Yeah, there's the adventure <gasps> right there. That's the adventure. You're going so fast. Oh, 60 miles an hour. Whoa. Oh my Whoa. Goodness. You can't put the brakes on Rod Hill. Uh, that's the story <laughs> coming up here at 545. How did you survive, we ask? How? You know, I'd never been to Florence. That was my first trip. I haven't been there either. You know, you hear about the dunes. You really yeah, got to see yeah. them. They're, they're massive. And it's the, the rides they take you on. Have you been there? No, Holy. I've Have not. You been there? Uh, not in 25 years. Oh my wow. gosh. Yeah. So we we're all going to enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah. All right. This gets you outside. Um, as a forecaster, I tell you what you see now is not what you're going to see in uh, a couple hours from now, or maybe even much sooner. But for the time being, we have blue skies looking off to the northeast. Uh, now notice the uh, airport observation along the Columbia River already showing clouds. It is solid cloud cover from parts of Vancouver all the way up to Seattle. And there's a marine push of low clouds expected to overtake the city in the coming hours. So for right now, it's kind of a mixed bag depending on where you are. Overcast skies at noon 61. Yesterday it was sunny in 83. Today we may or may not get breaks in the cloud cover here in the North Valley once they come in. I have us getting up to about 70. Here's Chris. Rod, we can see some of those clouds up in Vancouver. This is SR 14 looking eastbound from Lisa Road. It looks like that eastbound section of SR 14 has reopened ahead of schedule. Uh, a reminder that it closes and has closed each night this week as they continue finishing up uh, work on the Lisa Road overpass. So that'll be closed again overnight tonight. It's a simple detour. Uh, folks just detoured on and off the exit ramp at Lisa Road. But in any event, it looks like that has reopened. There's I-5 near Wilsonville rolling right along on that side of town. Highway, excuse me, Interstate 84 out near Troutdale. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Wide open, guys. We've got uh, no major freeway issues out there just yet. Yeah, looking great out there. Thank you, Chris. As part of the KGW Solutions Project, we are highlighting efforts to fix some of the biggest issues in our community. This morning, we are talking about something thousands of people have had to deal with stolen cars. The good news here is that this trend is beginning to turn in a more positive direction, partly because of a police partnership with OHSU. Devin Haskins joins us live in our studio this morning to explain how this is working. Good morning there, Devin. Yeah, good morning. No, when you compare numbers from March of 2023 to this past March, Portland police reported a 40% decline in stolen cars. The drop in numbers due in part to some unique partnerships helping police solve some of these cases. And one of those unique partners is OHSU's Night Cancer Institute. The scientists and data analysts there help officers hone in on what's working during stolen vehicle operations. They then turn that into a formula to help better identify stolen cars. Now officers admit they can't see everything, so the help from the community is also another big player in all of this. Like the Facebook group PDX Stolen Cars, they have over 20,000 followers. The group posts pictures while cruising around in areas where police are looking for stolen vehicles and work with police to help identify those stolen vehicles. Police say these partnerships are paying off. We certainly had a hope and a belief that, you know, if we looked at this in a, in a very specific way, if we thought outside the box and if we, you know, applied best practices from outside industries, from the private sector, um, from the medical industry, and we leverage their methodologies that, you know, we could improve our results. That was the goal. All right, so police say there are some things you can do to prevent your car from getting stolen. Officers say a big one, use a steering wheel lock like a club. And if you need one, you can always stop by the PPB's East, uh, East Precinct to pick one up. The KGW Solutions Project is our commitment to highlight stories like this one. So if you know someone or an organization doing good work in our community to solve some of our biggest challenges, we want to hear from you. Just send us an email, solutions at kgw.com. You can also check out the latest from the Solutions Project at kgw.com slash solutions. All right, thank you, Devin. In other headlines this morning, some families in the Beaverton School District are dealing with the news that their kids' schools may be closing. 
The news stems from a proposal to fill up a new, bigger Raleigh Hills Elementary School. KGW's Thomas Schultz has more. On a stuffy May evening, hundreds of parents, kids, and community members crowded into the Raleigh Park Elementary gym. That's, I guess, why we're here, right? Is to find that out. With questions. I told them I had lots of questions. After parents learned Friday, the Beaverton School District is considering closing Raleigh Park and several others to fill the currently under construction Raleigh Hills School. We're really trying to understand why. Why is the district pushing for this philosophy? Sarah Gardner-Smith has a second grader at Raleigh Park, which has around 300 kids. She and other parents say the small size is better for their students. Kids do better in small schools based on pretty much every measure of student success. 750 kids starts to feel institutional. And they say Beaverton hasn't been transparent about its studies to possibly close schools. We really didn't get a lot of heads up into what was going on. Beaverton declined our interview request, though a spokesperson says the district wasn't ready to tell families about the proposals because the planning committee just began studying options in February. And there's a chance no schools will close. It is a study group. It is not making any decisions whatsoever. The superintendent will take that recommendation and decide whether or not to proceed. Still, parents worry in two years, kids will be relocated. The smaller schools have a stronger community fabric. In this community fabric, outside the school and in will be torn. It's an irreplaceable loss. Thomas Schultz, KGW News. Now to some other local headlines we're following this morning. A popular Northeast Portland brewery is out $3,000 after a break-in where a pair of thieves got into a safe. Security camera video shows two, the two rather casually leaving Migration Brewing. It's off Northeast Gleason Street and it happened yesterday morning. The owners say this is the fifth time someone's broken into that specific location. Meantime, Mayor Ted Wheeler's office says they're working to connect Migration Brewing with a small business repair grant. Wheeler also proposed adding $500,000 to those grants, given how often vandalism and break-ins tend to happen. In Vancouver, police are looking for this man who they say stabbed a woman in the neck earlier this week on the campus of Clark College. These are surveillance photos of the suspect. The victim says she was sitting outside the Archer building on Tuesday when this man came up to her screaming and asking for help. So at first she thought he had punched her. Then she realized she was actually stabbed. She was transported to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police say they believe this same man also tried to get into another woman's car on campus the day before. That woman screamed, they said, and the suspect ran away. So if you recognize this man, you're asked to call Vancouver police. And people will do a lot for what they think will be a cool selfie. In fact, someone climbed a power line tower, then fell 40 feet while they were trying to take one. Witnesses say they saw someone climbing the power line tower near Selwood Riverfront Park when they got electrocuted while they were trying to take that selfie. That's when they fell 40 feet into some bushes. Fortunately, they're going to be okay, but Portland Fire reminding people not to put themselves in dangerous situations. All right, one more story to cover before we get to Rodney Hill's forecast. We're talking WNBA, Rod, because Beaverton's own Cameron Brink made her league debut last night with the LA Sparks. Cameron Brink scored 11 points against the Atlanta Dream. She also had four assists and two block shots, but that effort wasn't enough to secure a win. Atlanta beat LA 92-81. Brink and the Sparks are going to visit defending champion Las Vegas this Saturday. So I wasn't in the uh, studio yesterday. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the two of you covered uh, Caitlin Clark's debut on Wednesday night. Yeah, I, I think I read points in her debut. Well, I think I read the bigger headline was the fact that it was the most watched WNBA game ever. Caitlin Clark's that debut so on Wednesday night. That is so cool. Did you read that too? Uh, I, I heard it. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna uh, look that up. They and played make sure against the Sun, right? I'm, I'm a hearer more than a reader. Oh, <laughs> hear they this? Did they sell out the Sun? Did they, did they play the Sun? Uh, was that the team? And then Caitlin they, Clark's game was a sellout. Believe, yeah, yeah, it was a sellout. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So no, it's terrific what's happening to women's professional sports right now. A lot of eyeballs. It's yes. Great, great stuff. Here's a look at our uh, Pacific satellite picture. Notice the uh, cold front setting up to our north. So we have two 
different surges of cooler air today taking hold. Number one is starting to take hold right now to push a cooler marine air that's coming in that will bring cloudiness over downtown Portland in the coming hour or two. And then the second surge is this cool front that actually comes in this evening. And as this comes in this evening, we might get some sprinkles or some traces of rain. Right now we're really quiet. Uh, it is solid cloud cover from a good chunk of Clark County all the way up to Seattle. The infrared satellite picture doesn't really showcase that overly well, but uh, there are low clouds coming our way. Here are the temps. Kelso, good morning. You are overcast, 53. So that's a cloudy drive this morning up to Seattle where it's 51. You get south of Portland and it's all still mainly clear down to Eugene where it's 50. We have clouds in Astoria, 52. It's 62 in the Dallas and 60 in Pennsylvania. It will be a day with more sun east of the Cascades where temperatures will be warming up nicely once again. Now, by the way, yesterday, Portland 83. Still looks like yesterday's 80 plus degree temperatures are going to be the last sunny day that warm that we will see in a week or more as the forecast it's cooler for quite a little stretch coming. Here's the marine push on Futurecast. This will be all low clouds coming in at 7 this morning. And then notice from Portland and certainly to the north up in southwest Washington, the clouds may not break. Here we are later this afternoon getting into this evening. This is 4 p.m. Chance of some sprinkles or some scattered spritzy showers coming through with that cool front I showed you. Now tomorrow we're back to sunshine, but the air mass tomorrow is cool enough. That even with sun, Portland may not make it to 70. 70 is probably the high end of what we could do tomorrow. Here's your weekend Saturday. Again, these aren't much. They're kind of sprinkles or spritzy showers coming through, but we keep that threat of a raindrop or two around on Sunday. Certainly no soaking rainfall expected over the weekend. In fact, what I want you to note on this map, this is today through Tuesday. So over a period of six days upcoming, we're looking at less than a tenth of an inch in Salem. This shows 14100s in Portland. So again, that's some rain chances coming, but again, nothing overly looking like it's just an all out soaking rain event. Uh, today, partly cloudy skies this afternoon after some morning cloudiness this morning in the Mid Valley, Salem 72, your high temperature. Clouds likely don't break in southwest Washington because of that long view, only 64. And look at the cool down here 70 today, 68 tomorrow, 63 on Sunday. And then low to mid 60s through the mid part of next week. Mr. Carney, you coming in? No, this is all good. This is all good. Can I make a quick correction? Caitlin Clark, not to this, this is perfect. Oh. <laughs> Caitlin, Clark, Caitlin Clark's WNBA debut yes. on Wednesday night, the most watched game, not ever, but in 23 years. Wow. Always want to share the right facts. Okay. Yes. Thank you very now much. I'm okay. Want me to step out? <laughs> yeah, please get out of here. <laughs> I'll take over from here. Thanks, guys.